Okay, here we go. Okay, so he shrinks. This is episode one. This is how we start episode the fucking three episodes. This is 11 three. minutes into the show. I like I how he just, just bunny hops over cocaine. The, yeah. Oh, oh. Is it accurate? What do you think? Rock your fucking dick. What do you think the moral of the story of this is? I, don't do drugs. Yeah. You'll see why. Oh, I'm I'm sure I do. I know exactly what's about to happen. I'm sure. I well, you know what, exactly what's uh, going to oh, happen. Yeah, I've oh, seen there it. had oh, to have been God. research oh. on what does the inside of the penis look like. Ask any urologist; they'll know. Get to the prostate. <laughs> this is going to be the best like two minutes in the history of this podcast. Oh God! Oh no! See, you oh. know it's going to happen the first time you see him do that. Oh my god. Oh my god. At least he looks upset about it. <laughs> so he's like got the proportionate strength of a fucking Oh, he's going to go up his ass. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. Oh my god. <laughs> what the fuck? Is that a Ziploc bag? <laughs> Is it a bag of cocaine? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> well, he's overdosed. <laughs> <laughs> Told ya. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> It was a lot. That was a lot in uh, three, three minutes. minutes. <laughs> it's only 14 <laughs> minutes into the first episode of the show. had a catheter no i have not been fortunate enough to have a, a catheter it's not fortunate enough I, what the fuck i don't buy hey, that a tiny little human going into someone's urethra would be at all pleasurable and i know because i've placed many a catheter and many a time no offense but dudes are weenies about it I, like they are the biggest <laughs> babies i would ever. argue against that because there's several instances where dudes love shit like that there is sounding, sounding yes yep. but one sounding is a medical procedure that's used to enlarge their urethra and generally speaking it's not pleasurable until you get to a certain point why would get i get to the prostate why would i need my ear? <laughs> Why would I need my urethra enlarged? Because some people's urethras are really, really small. So in order to do um, la anything with cameras, sometimes just to do a catheter, depending on the damage to the urethra or the prostate, you have to enlarge the urethra in order to get well this stuff up there. Knock on plastic. I <laughs> never need a camera in my dick hole. Okay. Well, I'm just saying uh, out of the... Many, many catheters I've placed, men are like the biggest babies about it. So I highly doubt that 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 that's quite accurate. What are the odds that he finds the one guy that's like, oh, yeah, that's my thing? I don't think that was the first guy that he's done that to. Here's the thing. You're thinking too much into it. I am. What like I show. said, I think I took it a little too literally. But <laughs> yeah. all I can think as I'm watching that is I call bullshit. I call massive bullshit, but they were accurate that he'd totally OD on that, you know, being shaken up in a bag of cocaine. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> never done the cocaine. Me neither. I've just seen a lot of overdoses. Understandable. What do you do? What is, what is your title? So technically I'm a PCT in or an ER tech is what they call it. But I um, have been working in healthcare for 18 years. I'm a PYT. Pretty young thing. Pretty young yeah, sure. <laughs> it's a patient care tech is nice. okay. what they call it. Or 
our our ER calls it an ER patient care specialist, I guess, but we have like a bit more of an expanded role. So I started as a CNA and then it sounds moved like into you this. get to see a lot of dicks. Unfortunately, yeah. Yeah. Uh yeah. What's un- what's unfortunate about this? Oh God, Not the all things dicks are pretty. <laughs> <laughs> the things, all of the things. I feel like, and this I obviously biased. I feel like all things considered, I've got a pretty penis. <clears throat> I also want to say that the original podcast we talked about my penis a lot. Mm-hmm. So much has been said about so little. Um, I also feel like uh, this is this is off topic, but I feel like we 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 talked about it a lot since I got here. Uh, we all owe uh, Scott Stapp a, 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 an apology. Why? Because you keep singing. It's a one great line out of it a is song? a great song. Okay, here's, here's the, the thing. Problem. Here's the thing. That voice has been memed so much where you're just like, oh, it's just like you're the like, dad rock. Like, oh, me oh, now. Me now. But like, try to actually sound like Scott Stapp. It's impossible. He is a legitimately good singer. You can say the same thing about Nickelback, but they're still going to get shit for uh, it. I don't care what anyone see, says. I still like Nickelback. What so else? So do I. I don't mind Nickelback. The thing is, I feel like their lyrics lack the emotional depth that you get from Creed. That's, I feel you know, like, that's fair. I yeah. feel like earlier Nickelback is much better than later Nickelback. Look at this photograph. Oh no, I kind of like midway Nickelback. I'm just saying when you there's not singing about fucking everybody, it's better music. It is better music. Yeah. Oh my god, what ba- what band is that? There's a band that I've seen um, at Crowfest in Sioux Falls, uh, South Dakota. That Crowfest. Yeah, it's so the Crow is like the big rock station in Sioux Falls. Oh, and like so Laser have, Fest is. They have got Crowfest. It every year and one year the one year that i went it was marilyn manson which is why i went i thought it was like counting crows or whatever. no 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 <laughs> but they like, had it's a whole festival Mr. they had a band there. Me. <laughs> they had a band there that i wasn't super familiar with and literally all of their songs every single one of them was about fucking and i'm like uh what I do we all that. like was it typo negative 13 no I was like, we're is all there, just thirteen year old. Is hormones. there a band that oh, you've no. seen live that was like maybe an opener that you're like, I have no idea who this is, and then years later they become big and you're like, Holy shit, I saw mm. them before they were popular. No. Uh, well, there was Unfortunately a, not. <laughs> there's a band uh we saw open for Theory of a Dead Man. Uh that I was like, Man, this just looks like a bunch of Your soccer. TV's still on. Oh, my bad. <laughs> Uh, it's like here. when Uncharted played the entire episode. There we go. Um, but I basically described them as soccer dads that got together to make a band, and then I realized it was a very well-known band, <laughs> and they had a. I don't think it was Red Jumpsuit Apparatus. <laughs> no. It it was just it was a well known band. I, the be name interesting for Red right Jumpsuit Apparatus to open for Theory of a Dead Man. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's two completely different genres. Yeah, I did see Theory of a Dead Man open for Seether. Ooh, and then I bet that was the next show, year I went and saw Theory of a Dead Man as the headliner. Oh, I thought you were gonna say you saw Seether open for that Theory would be of a great, Dead Man, wouldn't it? <laughs> no, but uh, oh, the I think Theory of a Dead Man is the only band I've seen twice. Really? I've yeah. seen uh, Hollywood and Dead twice. Um, Theory of a Dead Man twice. I met them twice. Uh, Laserfest was crazy. Oh, the when I saw Theory of a Dead Man, um, Crossfade opened for them. Ah. Ooh, mm, there you go. One. I mm-hmm. saw I an artist named Alan Stone. He's like very... Like... Like funk, jazz, and he had like a solo, like 30 minute set, and I had no idea who he was. Really liked him. And then, like a year or two later, um, 
Macklemore had that one album that he put out that like everyone was mm. obsessed with because it had a uh, thrift, thrift shop. shop on it. So Alan Stone is in a song on that album called Neon Cathedral and then blew up because of that song. Won a Grammy because of that song. So mine isn't so much like they blew up, but so the one year I went and seen Trapped in Sioux Falls. Yeah. Love the band. Yeah, I'm not such a fan of the, Were the they front man. Ugh. Headstrong? Um, no, yeah, yeah. Like headstrong. what you did there. A little too headstrong. Uh, headstrong to take on anyone. The so the opener was actually a pretty popular like belong. local band, and it was hilarious because everyone kind of went to see that band, um, Skywind, and they trapped got so mad because the audience kept you know one more song, one more song mm-hmm. chanting. So they cut the power and oh. just in droves, you've seen everyone just leave because we as a whole did not like that at all. Um, so that was kind of interesting that the opener <laughs> was much more popular than the headliner. I think it was 2000. I maybe I've said this story already on the podcast, but I think it was like 2004. I went to Council Bluffs and I saw... Like an MTV2 music festival thing, and it was uh, Fall Out Boy, love All them. American Rejects, and Hawthorne Heights. Ooh, it was love fantastic. Hawthorne Heights too. But since it was sponsored by MTV2, in between sets, they would play like music videos of other bands that were kind of that same genre. And I had never even heard of Panic at the Disco. Oh, love Panic. Every time. Oh. Um, what was their first single? I write Sins, Not Tragedies. Every time that music video came on, the crowd went bananas. And I was like, what is happening? I remember it's the crazy because they have so many better songs. Yeah. And, and oh, I yeah. found out last night that evidently Brandon Urie hates that fucking song. Really? Yeah. It, they showed a footage of him at a concert and he was like, I can't believe I have to sing this fucking song again. <laughs> and then he just starts singing it. Have yeah. you seen Brandon Urie's um, cover of... Um, Bohemian Rhapsody? Mm-mm. Fantastic. Dude. Mm-hmm. That dude has range. Dude. Oh, yeah. He's amazing. Oh, he's a great singer. Love him. Um, I, The band that it was uh, opening for Theory of a Dead Man was Adelita's Way, by the way. Oh, oh yep. yeah. Yeah. There you go. I couldn't the, believe it was them until I heard the is, one song everyone knew them for. Is there a band? You know what? I'll, I'll even open it up. Is there a band or celebrity or anything, anyone in the public eye that people hate? Seem to hate, like Nickelback would be a good example, that you actually really enjoy. <laughs> You're like, I actually really enjoy Amber Heard. Ugh. Before all this started, did her, you think Amber look, Heard was a good actress? Her performance in Zombieland was transformative. Literally, Didn't because she, she turned into a zombie. Yeah. <laughs> she got double tapped by the back of, of a, a toilet. Bitch. I so funny story. We were talking about watching that last night because I have not seen it yet, but I've wanted to you for like seen ever. Zombie I know, Land, I know the greatest zombie movie of all time. Um, but one of the things that uh, Dave was like, "Hey, we should watch that. You can watch Amber Heard die," and I was like, "Sweet, yeah, let's do it." <laughs> Did you watch it? I didn't. Yeah, and, and if you're on Amber Heard's side and you want to see Johnny Depp die, watch Twenty One Jump Street. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There's a few of them, I'm sure. <laughs> um, Nightmare on Elm Street. Mm-hmm. The yeah. first one. Oh, that's right. Did you know Brendan Urie was in a Little Dicky song? Yeah. A who? From his first album. You what song was it? Is? Um, I don't. I, I can't think of what it's called, but it's the like it's the one emotional one. Yeah. yeah. That, was, that I mean, that was a solid. It's a good song. It is a good song. Um, any any artists, any bands, any actors, actresses? I mean, Nickelback's the easy go to. It is yeah. the easy go to. I don't know. I can't think of anybody either. Like a guilty pleasure. McDonald's. Ugh, I, I just, like legit love McDonald's. See, I just ate McDonald's for lunch three days I ago, and it just destroyed did today. my stomach. Yeah. yeah. Not a fan of McDonald's. So yeah. Much. Um, I'm gonna pee out of my butthole like <laughs> in like 45 minutes. <laughs> Sweet. No, I can't think of anything. I have a lot of people that everybody likes that I don't. Okay. Like Will Ferrell. Uh, you know what? That's fair. My fiance hates Will Ferrell. I like him in very limited things. I think it just a lot of times in the movies he's in, he's just way too over the top. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But she, then I love fucking old school and he's Frank the fucking tank. So she hates uh, other guys. Never seen it. She hates like dumb like comedy. It. 
She hates what? She hates what, like quote unquote dumb comedy. See, I'm that way with TV shows and cartoons. Yeah. Uh, that's why I don't watch Family Guy or The Simpsons because I think they're stupid. Yeah. South Park, I don't. But like she South watches Park. like she watches Archer, but she's like, that's really Archer. dumb. Yeah, she's like, no, but that's like smart comedy. And I'm like, mm. Mm. it is funny though. I'm just saying, yeah. it is. She I, watches a lot of. Uh, did you have you ever watched the uh, pilot episode of Archer where he's replaced with a Velociraptor? No, <laughs> you need to watch it. Um, I own the first like two three seasons. Speaking of justice seeking dinosaurs, uh, Velocipaster. I, what? Velocipaster? Velocipaster? Oh, you've never no. heard of Velocipaster? No, I Dude, was say, it is, it's on the level of Kung Fury. I was going to say Triceratops. Oh, I, okay, I just yeah, showed yeah. Kung Fury to Amy a few days ago. Right. And think? by a few days ago, I mean like probably like a month and a half ago. I just shared she <laughs> on Facebook. She was not impressed. I just shared on Facebook three days ago a face app of me yeah. as Kung Fury. I was like, you have Kung to understand, Fury. like this was not like a major studio thing. And the fact that like they play homage to like platformer um <laughs> what the fuck is I'm this i'm just gonna tell you though that dinosaur picture looks way better than the dinosaur in yeah. the actual Does movie it? it looks bad hold on after losing his parents a priest travels to china where he inherits a mysterious ability that allows him to <laughs> turn into a dinosaur at first horrified. i'm gonna guess horrified at first uh horrified by this new power a prostitute convinces him to use it to fight crime and ninjas. Yeah, what's great is um, I remember listening to an interview about that, and um, the so his when his parents die, they don't do some like grand effect, practical effect. They it do, is like a black bar that says "insert effect here." Yeah, it, it was some <laughs> shitty. It was some shitty placeholder, and they fucking found it hilarious, so they kept it in. And so when they shown it to whoever was publishing it or whatever, they're like, "Oh, I think we got like the master copy, like the copy before the hold on the finished product." Go down one. What does that say? Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, Vampire, Vampire Hunter. Hunter. <laughs> But um, they're like, oh, I think I think you gave us like the pre-production copy, and they're like, no, 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 that's <laughs> that's actually in the movie. It's amazing. Are we, I would are say we watching the trailer that that was sound. I turned the sound down well, specifically. Uh, is this the pastor? Yeah. yeah. Oh, the pastor was getting and she's the down. prostitute. The Velocity. <laughs> <Master. laughs> Alright, I'm gonna turn up a little then. Why does he look like John Mulaney? <laughs> I love how it cuts and it brings up like the, the big old 70s bold style. Yeah, it looks like a fucking Tarantino movie. Why does he look like John Mulaney? I don't know who John Mulaney He's is. He's a stand up comedian. <laughs> it, I'm honestly surprised you've never heard of Velocipaster. <laughs> is, uh, is that it? Yeah. <laughs> uh, it looks like Barney. I think the review that Dave watched the other day about this is more than enough for me to see because I am not interested in the slightest. Is there uh is is there a list of movies that are like for you so bad that they're good? I love I like Killer Clowns from Outer Space. I've heard you talk about that one. I've mm. never seen it. It's not great. Uh <laughs> but it's funny. <laughs> I'm sold. <laughs> it's it's a so bad it's good movie. Like you the acting in parts of it aren't the best, but you have these really good looking alien clown costumes that kind of make up for it. Uh, and is you ever saw, did you ever see <laughs> Ernest scared stupid? <laughs> Claire Sue as Chinese villager. <laughs> did you ever see uh, Nicholas, Ernest scared stupid? No. So the guys that do the trolls in that movie were the ones that designed well, they wrote, directed, and made the costumes for Killer Clowns from Outer Space. And actually, two of the trolls in Ernest Scared Stupid are repaints of those clown costumes. Did you know, I know that you know this, did you know that the original uh, Michael Myers mask 
was uh, William Shatner mask. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, useless trivia junkie. Killer yeah. sofa. Too lava. Too lava. <laughs> too lava. <laughs> So, it's a sequel to Lava Lantula. I'm not gonna lie. From a distance, <laughs> from a distance, that looks like Alex Jones. Yeah, it does. It does. Uh, killer killer sofa. sofa. What is the? What's the subtitle? Don't sit on the furniture. <laughs> There's another one. Um, Wolf of Snow Hollow or something like that. The, apparently, it's, it's cheesy, but it's actually not terrible. What does that say? So, what's this Danny Trejo one? Pastor. Oh, Pastor Shepherd. Love, love, love that neighbor. neighbor. So there <laughs> is a movie. I think it's called Snow Beast, and it takes place at a ski resort. But its whole star story is almost a direct ripoff of Jaws. <laughs> <laughs> Manborg. <laughs> I've watched a review okay, of that too. Here's so the, if you like the, to watch, like, no, go, no, go back real, real quick. I love how it's a five out of five on IMDb, and yet a four and a half stars from people who have watched the film. So if you like to like watch movie reviews and get like laugh about it, uh, there's two channels that I watch. One of them is called Decker Shadow, and it's a guy that just reviews movies and lives in Texas, and he does like comedic comedic takes on stuff and whatnot. And the other one is Brandon or Brandon Tinnold. Hold on a second. And he's a Canadian. I love how you typed in the Velocipaster, and then Amazon's like customers also searched for Looney Tunes. <laughs> <laughs> this gets better and better as we're going on. Spaghetti man. But uh, Decker Shadow did a review of Velocipaster, and that's what Kenna says. She saw the review, and she's like, I don't want to see that movie. Yeah. And besides, he doesn't transform into a, a raptor anyway. He's a T-Rex. Okay. This is an awkward question. Is there any movies? So we've talked about movies that are so bad they're good. Is there movies that are... I'm trying to even think of an example. Are there movies that are so good they're bad? I have an actual good example of both instances. Okay. Morbius. Is so good it's bad or so bad it's good? It's a fucking god-awful movie. You know what makes it even better? People bought into the meme for whatever fucking reason. Somehow they thought it was a good idea to bring it back to theaters. They not only made 86,000 coming back to theaters. Yikes. I'll probably still buy it when it comes out on Blu-ray. Yeah, I haven't I seen it too. yet. I haven't either. It's just a I haven't seen thing. any of the Sony like Spider-Man. You never saw universe uh, movies. Like I haven't seen Venom. But you've seen like Spider-Man. Like, yeah. Sam well, Ray yeah. Movie. Yeah. 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 Uh, Venom's good. The Wolf of Snow Hollow. A stressed out police officer struggles not to give in to the paranoia that grips his small mountain town as bodies turn up after each full moon. So there, was, there was a scene that, that got me because uh, I saw it on TikTok and he goes, um, something happens and the girl goes, you're not going to ask him if I'm okay. And it's so overly acted. It's brilliant because... He starts screaming at her. She has like a tr like a head wound, and he starts screaming. And he goes, "No, I'm not gonna ask if you're okay. You're out on the street bleeding. What are your parents gonna think of me?" And it <laughs> um, are there any video games that are so so bad they're good? Ooh. No, I don't play bad video games. You, you gotta. You need to start. Oh, I do. Oh, that's I tried to play one. Tiny Tina's Wonderland the other day, made it 10 minutes in, and decided I didn't like the game. I am obsessed. I like Tiny it. Tina's it's, not, it's not the story that's the problem. It's just, I just don't like the way that Borderlands games handle. That's fair. I like Borderlands games. See, I, I have that same oh. habit where I get into Borderlands, and I'm like, yeah, okay, I'm finally going to get into it. And I'll, I'll start playing for a while, and then I'm just like, I'm over it. So Tiny Tina was one of my favorite characters um, and so when I, I have this, these, this group of people that I play with consistently have been for like the last <laughs> five or six years insane. But, um, we, Sean, one of them was like, and it's funny cause his, his Xbox name is actually section eight, but it's spelled weird. And so I didn't realize when I first, when we first started playing and this was back when we were playing red dead, um, two 
And I didn't realize that his name was Section 8, so I just ran around calling him Shun because that's the only letters that I could put together. <laughs> um, and so it kind of stuck for me anyway. Like, I'm the only one that does it, but I he's always Shun now. And same with – I have a friend that's a part of that group that goes by Tactical – something like he changes his name like every three months actually you know there's a game i want to get people like i always try to recommend ga like games that just don't review well that aren't really all that good but i feel like they'd be enjoyable with people um metal gear survive oh is that the yeah I know that's the about. zombie one they yeah. came out yeah it's After not it, kojima left the mechanics are fine i just Eh. See, that's the nice thing about Game Pass is that I play a lot of games that, like, otherwise I probably would not have purchased. Because, mm -hmm. like, like the game I'm playing right now, like Ori and the Blind Forest, like I would not have, I would not have picked that game up and like purchased it. It's not a game that, like, I would have. Um, I don't know. I, I'm more of like a single player action adventure, action and adventure game, like, uh, like an Uncharted or a Metal Gear Solid or a, you know. I think. We're in a we're we're in a weird spot with games right now because PlayStation just had their um their state of play and they showed RE4 remake. Yeah, I heard about that. They showed yep. Final Fantasy 16. Um they had they they had some solid stuff. Stray is coming out to PlayStation Plus next month, which is going to be Amazing. Is that the one where you play as a cat? It is. Love that. But, and I, I think in terms of like exclusives or in terms of um, momentum right now, I think PlayStation has it. I, with the fact that they pushed back Starfield, which was a huge blow to anyone for, you know, Xbox in general. Um, I ho I'm hoping that this showcase coming up on the 12th for the Xbox Bethesda stuff, um, I'm hoping that that kind of rejuvenates. Do you think it's going to be Fallout slash Skyrim in space? Starfield? Yeah. I don't know. I, I feel like it's going to be a bit more fluid. But you uh, think it's going to handle similarly? Because both no. those games handle very similar. Sim similarly? No. Synonyms. I, I, think, <laughs> I think it's going to be way more um, fluid. Hmm. I, I, I think it's going to handle a lot more along the lines of, say, a Call of Duty, for example, rather than a Skyrim or a Fallout. I, ju I just think... I kind of hope it's just like Fallout. I, but I love Fallout. I understand. Uh, yeah, me too. So I'm actually, my PlayStation is down in my basement right now, and she's like, "We should bring it upstairs." Use Disney Plus, and I was like, "We should bring it upstairs so I can play Fallout Four again." <laughs> you know, I started Fallout, and I can't get into it. Which one? Fallout Four. Really? You know, I don't know why. Mod it. Look, mm. turn all the death claws into ro Macho Man Randy Savage. The the good it's thing. thing. <laughs> the good oh, don't thing. worry. I played um I played a modded version of Skyrim where one of the dragons is Macho Man. <laughs> The good thing about Fallout 4 is they have a built-in mod system that works on console. Ooh. So you don't have to specifically go to PC to get it modded or anything. I don't... I just... Maybe I just don't... I'm not good at We could try... RPGs. Hey, we could I'm try holding to get together and do Fallout 76. To, about, to me? No, I to Fallout... I Fallout 76 on the PlayStation 4. Uh, I have it on Xbox. We also have it and on I'm the Xbox. Sure it's crossplay. I'm pretty sure. We have it on the Xbox. Into. Although I hate it. You hate it because you played it when it first came out. Yeah, it's so not the same game. I actually, I like the Fallout series, um, but I was super stoked when they came out with 76 and I was like, oh my God. And then you, it were, was, you were alone in that. Yeah. When it first came out, I, well, because I, I hadn't played Fallout 4 in a long time, whatever. And, and I was mostly, so I have a habit of like throwing myself into a game for like six months and then burn myself out completely oh and same. then go back and then i hop to a different one and eventually i'll go back same with diablo 3 like I, that's probably hands down one of my favorite games of all time that i've ever played but it was to the point where we'd be fighting on like 
nightmare three or four or five, whatever it was. And we'd be, fa- I'd be falling asleep because it was so, that's all I played for. Game. Yeah. And I'd played it for so long. So that's what I had done to Fallout 4. And then I was super excited when they came out with 76 because I was like, hey, another way to kind of get into this world. And then I got into it and I was like, fuck all of this. I can't believe I had to pay for this. I was so mad. And I've sort of held a grudge since, like to the point where Dave's like, no, it's better now. And I'm like, fuck it. It is. It can go die in a fire. I get it. I get it. I'm, I'm the same way with I was that. So mad. Um, I'm the same way with. Uh, I don't know. I th- I feel like Division's been pretty solid all the way through. But I, like, yeah. So I like. Yeah, I like the Division. But yeah, it, it, I'm in a very it. interesting. What? Never even heard of Division. Oh. See, I think it's this a, is how so I Tom feel Clancy about game. Clancy. It's very much like mm-hmm. a Destiny or like looter shooter. I liked it, but the map the the map and the gameplay is fantastic. Oh, yeah. it's oh amazing. my god. Um, which is funny because, you know, of the games that I like or that I play, I have not once ever played Call of Duty. I will not do it because I suck at video games. I am not I'm a terrible at them. guy at all. But I Maybe love Destiny and Destiny 2. I and switched Fallout. it to where it was yeah. third person. I know. I know. I am hardcore on Destiny. Oh, my God. Love Destiny. I'm, yeah. See... I'm in a very weird spot where I used to be able to... Although I'm holding a grudge on them, too. (laughs) Yeah. Is there a game that came out, was not great, like, panned totally, like, completely, um, but then after patches and some... No Man's Sky. Yes, Yes, exactly what I was going to say is No Man's Sky. That is a prime example of of you fucking up royally. How did it get better? They fixed it. Uh, how like what was what was for, they, for those that don't know how was it bad and how have they improved it since so they overhyped it the mm-hmm. the, the problem is uh sean murray came out and it's said sh- it's always sean uh, came out and said hey you're gonna be able to visit billions of planets yeah. which to his credit he was correct yep. the problem with that was was that what they show was not what we got yeah they they showed lush worlds with wildlife. Just tons of stuff. Ton, tons of stuff. Stuff that like makes you salivate with like, oh my god, the, the possibilities are endless. It's yeah. so pretty. And then you get in it, and it's like... um, uh, What the fuck is this? It, uh, okay, so it's like watching Jurassic Park, and then watching... The movie. Velocipaster. Yeah. <laughs> So. It, so so you know how like they play the Jurassic Park theme and then you got that shitty harmonica version? It's that. Yeah. Uh they just wasn't I feel like there wasn't a lot to do in it. No, not there at wasn't. First. I literally yeah, it, when I when No Man's Sky play, came out and I played it, I literally just mined shit. Yeah, yeah. it was not as expansive. There was no as... direction, no quest, no nothing. <laughs> they said it would be. This. Yeah. <laughs> I just I was thinking of a meme I saw where it's like kids love playing Minecraft and what this proves is that we need to bring back child labor because <laughs> the kids <laughs> they yearn for the mines. <laughs> I like Minecraft. <laughs> Minecraft's pretty good. Another game I've never played. Um, My kids love it. Just oh, mine. My son is insanely. Yeah, he's all about Minecraft. But I, I can't get into it. I don't. I don't get the point. What? What's the point? Build shit. Yeah, I. What's I know, the but there's like Creation, not like survival. Kill, kill shit. <laughs> um, <laughs> Anthem was a solid. In my opinion, it's not a great game. Well, it was a shitstorm the, when it came out. Yeah. The gameplay was great, and they did the same thing that uh, No Man's Sky did, where they pr- they promised you something, and it looked great. It looked amazing. You could fly around in an Iron Man suit. Oh, I remember and this game. Explore the but world. wasn't it breaking systems yeah. when they first it was yeah. came out? And um, the 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 big thing that everyone was hoping for was the Cataclysm events, which were supposed to be live events that would radically change the way you played, radically change the map in real time. So, like, you could go to this live event, something would happen, and then the map would drastically change. And it, they pushed it, they kept pushing it back, and then when they actually put it out, it was like, Bleh. This is it. Has, um, 
Has Cyberpunk gotten any better with updates? Oh god, yeah, that's uh, it that's has. another one. I sold it a week after I bought it. Yeah, yeah I, I played won't... it when it first came out. And I, I was like, this it. is. I'm... I have it yeah. on digital on my Blizzard launcher, but it's... fuck that game. That's another game that really kind of made me mad. So, am I the only one, or no? That like when. They start really hyping a game like where they're like, "This is going to be life changing, epic, blah blah." blah. I'm like, "I'm out," because y'all are liars. Yeah, like, yeah, straight up lying. Honestly, it. I think it started around No Man's Sky too, like yeah. that cyberpunk. Because I was oh, all in on cyberpunk. I would argue it yeah. happened oh, during yeah. Fable Two and Fable Three. Yeah, touche. <laughs> yeah, but that's fucking Molyneux though. Like he does that shit on the regular. But How remember, Fable 2 and 3 were any good is beyond me. I played them. When I, like, them. like when we pre ordered Cyberpunk, like we went all out. I mean, we didn't get the, because, you know, there's like different tiers that you can pre order. With every fucking. And game I think it was like a hundred and some dollars. And I'm like, sweet, I'm going to drop all this. This is going to be super fucking fun- fantastic. They hyped that thing up so much. And I was like, I barely got out of the creation. Um, because I was, I had watched someone else play it and I'm like, I'm going to give it a shot. And I, I was literally just at the very beginning of the game. I'm like, fuck you, dude. This is not it was, what it you mean. It just, it, the city that it takes yeah. place in just, it did not seem like it had any life to it whatsoever. It wasn't how they had built it. So a, a good, a good example of this is I got cyberpunk. Austin got cyberpunk. Now the thing is I got it on the, uh, like the one X, Yep. And he got it on, like, the basic, like, Xbox One. And... Was Xbox One? X? So, so there was a drastic difference in it. Yeah. Or, no, I got the optimized version for Series X. It doesn't matter. I got it on the one console that it wasn't fucking up majorly. I was lucky. Yeah. Um, I remember coming over to Austin's, and he's like, man, I can't get this. He's like, and I was like, oh, yeah, let me check it out. And so I kind of helped him, it's bad. but uh, it was a struggle. The frame rates were fucking mm-hmm. dog shit. It was ungodly bad. And I was like, I don't like, and I'm, I'm very much a, uh, an apologizer because I, I will stick through something, even if it's shit, just to be like, no, there really is something here. No Man's Sky is a prime example. And Granted that like that actually worked out. Like Cyberpunk was the one game that I just sat there and I'm like, fuck, I was wrong. So is there any game that someone or multiple someone's have been like, hey, you need to play this, you need to play this, you need to play this, and you just can't bring yourself to do it? Ooh. There's a game called Singularity that uh, my buddy Kevin kept pestering me to get and play. And it was supposed to be this first person where you had this device on your hand that, that would do a bunch of shit. And I just, I never got it. And I think a lot of it had to be because he kept pushing me for it. Fortnite. <laughs> I like Fortnite. Like yeah, what I, I played can't a bit. stand it. Yeah. Um, maybe it's because it's third person. But I feel like it's it's one of the better uh, fucking Battle Royale games that I'm actually I don't like at. Battle Royale games in general. I've never played the Battle Royale version of Fallout 76. 76 uh Trombone so <laughs> that reminds me uh Callisto protocol got yeah. announced at the playstation state of play which is essentially like a spiritual successor to dead space okay um it has it, like l- watching the trailer you can definitely tell it has the uh the bones of of dead space uh, what i'm concerned about is the fact that that's coming out roughly around the same time that the Dead Space remake's coming out. And so I'm afraid either Callisto Protocol's going to get shit on because everyone's nostalgic for Dead Space and that that remake's coming out. Or that Callisto Protocol is going to blow Dead Space out of the water and just kind of make all the hard work done for that just not matter. But it stars Josh uh, Brolin, uh, Dumel, Fergie's oh, husband. Oh, yeah. So, and it lo- <laughs> he looks fucking great in it. 
there are any games you don't like to play but like to watch people play? Ooh. Ooh. Um, not that I wouldn't like to play it. I'm sure it would be great if I did. I just, I just never have. Um, I've actually never played Ghost of Tsushima, but I watched multiple people play it. What? And that game is be- I, I've, I've played like the first little bit of it just to um, get a feel for the controls. But other, otherwise, I just watched Amy play it. I watch a lot. Uh, see, the thing is, I don't watch a lot of streamers. But I tend to watch. No, I'm talking like, more about in person. Oh, oh, like the resident. Like I've never played Resident Evil Two, like the remake. I just watched you play it. Yeah, uh, yeah. we did Uncharted too. I mean, I played Uncharted. Yeah. All right. Well, my um, examples were Tiny Tina's Wonderland because I like watching her play it, but I can't stand playing it myself. And then Dead Space. Oh, I never actually ne- played. Um, I never myself played uh, uh, The Last of Us Two. I just watched you and Amy. Yeah, right? you were there. You were there. I think at the beginning of mm-hmm. Last of Us Two, and then I had told you one day that, like, hey, I'm at the tail end, and you came over to my place just to watch me play yep. the end. Yep. Um, I will never any narrative game. I will never like, like decision based. That's really the only one I can watch in person because other than that, I'm just like ah, I just I, like I see what you're Give doing wrong, me. and I can't. <laughs> Like, I try so hard not to, like, coach people, and it's so hard when I see them doing it wrong. I, that's why I can't get frustrated with me when we play WoW. Um, so, I was just going to say, that personality, you were my, you are my sister growing up. Like, I didn't get into video games for a really long time because I would be playing, and rather than just being able to sit and play and enjoy the game and do what I learn on my own or like do what I wanted to do. I always had someone over my fucking shoulder being like, "Mm, you got to do this. And eventually it was like, just fucking take it and get the fuck away from me. I don't man. See, I don't do Um, that. The benefits of being an old, uh, older, oldest child, right? Yeah. So I never really got into them, but I also really enjoy watching other people play video games. Um, so really any video game that someone is playing, I will watch my frustration and this is something that a lot of people are frustrated get frustrated with me about as well as i really like the story of games yeah and so like you take one of my exes it. yeah he used to just skip everything and i'm like what i was You're reading missing. that Ooh, here's the thing i am the exact opposite i love the story of games yeah. so i don't give a same fuck about any of the like side quests mm-hmm. i'm just like i just gotta know how it ends i just don't See, like i do how all side quests it. first um, and so does Amy. Yeah. Eva Ladirtly like, just made a video about that. Yeah. Yep. Um, but they also playing together um, because I we always had a setup where like there's always been two TVs and two Xboxes or whatever game <coughs> console in my living room because I tend to like to play with people. Mm-hmm. Um, and I haven't. Most of the people I've ever dated are into video games. Um, so. But they get really annoyed because when they're playing with me, I want to read or listen or find everything and read it. Like, and they're like, dude, seriously? No, we're moving on. And I'm like, but I just want to. <sighs> oh, every fucking letter, yeah. every everything in like yep. Resident Evil. Yep. And, yep. yep. I, I am that Amy's person. the same way. That's just like, read everything. Yeah. I, I, I skip through some Or of the thing that I cannot. I love you I'll skip so through much. Stuff if I, I love know you it, so much. But the one thing I can't stand about Amy is every fucking time she gets a trophy, she has to hit the PS button. She has to go into the trophy thing. She has to see exactly what she got it for, what the rarity is. Like, oh, I don't care about I'm like, that. what the fuck are you doing? She's like, I, 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 I hate I, it. I do that only when it's when I know it's out of the blue rather than like... I've never... If I complete a chapter and it pops, I'm like, okay, I get it. I have never given one shit about trophies. So I am just I like do. you. I don't even know what trophies I've gotten. No. I don't I don't care. I don't pay attention I don't know what my gamer score is. Me neither. Not a clue. See, you find that on your profile, right? Yep. Okay. Yeah. See, I love, I love playing narrative games with a bunch of people. We talk about this a few times. Hidden Agenda. Fantastic to play agenda. with people. Yeah. Um... Man of Madon, you know, mm, that kind of thing. Yep. But, uh, which reminds me, the quarry's coming out here soon. Let's go. We should uh, get together and play that. The four of us. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, 
I see. I play with. I, I play Fortnite with Heather. That, that is us. our go-to game. The four of us too. <laughs> that is our go-to game. And uh, what is it? Fortnite. Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, and I have a bad habit. Uh, I know I've gotten a lot better of like being like, oh hey, don't forget to shield or hey reload or whatever. Doesn't matter. Hey, we're um, to record a fucking podcast here. But I uh, I also get. I try to blame myself for everything. That way I don't make it an issue with everyone else. So like if something happens, say say Heather walks off and does her own thing and I get killed or she's not keeping up or she stops and loots while we need to move. I get frustrated. She knows I get frustrated and I don't mean to make it a visible frustration. I just don't make it a vocal frustration. I I would just as soon rather let me be frustrated. Let me just be like, <sighs> and and that is the extent of it. Like I just let me have that, and then we don't have issues. Is there a okay? So like Red Dead, right? Is a western. Um. Love it. And Fuck then, Micah Bell. <laughs> yes. And then, like, obviously, like, uh, like, Resident Evil is, like, scary movie. It's a horror. Haunted. It's horror. Is there a certain genre of storytelling or a genre of whatever you want to call it that hasn't been explored in video games yet that you're like, damn, that would make a really good video game, but it hasn't been explored yet? I'm sure there is. It's just hard to think of it. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I can't. Yeah. I'm just trying to think of like, there, hey, there hasn't been a good representation of bleh, in a video game. I can't think of anything yeah, I can't either. I really think of anything. I mean, Spec Ops The Line got marketed as an action heavy game and then it really dealt with the horrors of war and PTSD and, and mental illness. What is your favorite Subgenre or favorite genre of like, let's say movies. Oh, zombies! Zombies. I what's love your, zombies. Okay, so what's your favorite zombie video game? <sighs> zombies ate my neighbors. Bingo, bango, bongo. I like. I mean, Resident Evil is such an easy go-to. Um, Dead Rising is pretty good. What was that game? I feel very stupid for not being able to remember it i don't remember but it's all the um fuck it is the you're on a motorcycle day's gone day's gone so good fucking fantastic so good what's your favorite genre of like film and then what's your favorite video game adaptation of that genre okay so this is a really bad question to ask me about any kind of any music movies anything like that because i cannot pick just one um also i'm I've got hardcore ADD when it comes to that stuff. Like, I think Dave thought I was exaggerating until he started going through my CD case. And he's like, dude, what the? You're literally all over the place. So. Oh, I am mostly hip hop exclusive, but. I'm to, not. Today, I am. Uh, I mean, I, I'm all about. <laughs> oh, my now. <laughs> I literally have like opera next to. Rap next to country, next to folk, next to yeah, I I'm all over the place. Speaking so of hip hop and I, I can't really pick up. I went and saw Hamilton last weekend. It was fucking. Amazing. I have not seen that yet. Uh, I know it's There's, so good. Yeah, I have I no do. desire to see it. All right, imagine if the ten dollar bill could rap. Oh, I already know what it is. I, I totally so want good. to. I know songs it's from so it even. Good. I have the soundtrack, it's but I've not so seen it yet. I do. I, I got a good question. Yes. As far as video games and movies go, mm -hmm. what is a video game that you would like to see turned into a movie? Not I, not one that's in the work. I feel like we've already <laughs> talked about this. Um, I think so, but... Ooh. I mean, I know it's in the works, but I don't think they've actually started filming anything. So I feel like Metal Gear Solid, Metal Gear Solid still yep, counts. That doesn't count. That doesn't count. That doesn't count oh, because fuck. they're working on it. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll put it to you this mm. way. A good example is they tried making this, and uh, it 
it didn't go anywhere. Like th- there was a poster for it at the Cannes Film Film Festival years and years and years ago. I would love to see a Kane and Lynch movie. Ooh. The thing is, they tried making it where Jamie Foxx and Bruce Willis were to star in it. It didn't get past that poster, as far as I know. But I, I think a Kane and Lynch show or movie would be really cool to see. What is the what's the game where it's like first person uh, free running? Mirror's Edge. Yeah. Could be good. I never played those games though. Um, Natalie loves them. Okay, so there is a. I bring this game up all the time, and no one ever remembers it. There is a game for PS One. Mm-hmm. It was a. It was like a side to side platformer game called Heart of Darkness. I've heard of it. It's yep. so good, and no one remembers it. But it's like a little boy, and his dog follows him, and you have this like laser gun thing, and you like fight these little like shadow monster things. That would make, like if they did it in that exact same style as the video game, as far as animation goes, it would make a really cool like animated series. It would be awesome. That's the one. I, I feel love that almost game. with the video games, you can't. You have to make it some sort of series instead of just like a standalone right? movie. Because I was reading something the other day, and it's like a movie is two hours long. Some video games take 16, 20 hours to play. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Well, I mean, you got to think like which one, which media would serve it better, and would what has been done right. Me personally, I think the Mortal Com- the new Mortal Kombat movie. I haven't seen it I yet. Good seen enough. It. I have I've heard it's good. Yeah, it, it yeah, yeah, it's not bad for what they did with it. What um, is um let's go the other way. What is a movie or a series that you think would be would make a good video game? That's a good one. Um anyone? Anyone? Bueller. Bueller. I I literally just have I haven't too. seen that movie all the way through. Oh, I haven't seen it all the way through in many, many years. I haven't seen... There was a movie we were just talking about. Jurassic Park. I haven't seen Jurassic Park all the way through either. <laughs> Any of them. Really? I'm dead serious. Hmm. Um, Push. What is Push? So there's a movie that came out... That was a deep cut there. Push is not a very popular movie. I love Push. I, I like it too. The well, see, <laughs> word, word was that it was going to get a series adaptation. It just never happened. Was it based off a book? Uh, I think it's based off a graphic novel. Yeah, I think so too. Um, so basically, it stars Chris Evans, Ooh. and the whole idea is uh, there's people with superpowers, and they're being hunted down by a shady government organization. As you do, and mm-hmm. um, they're very unique. Uh, Thing so like he is a pusher or a mover, which um, he's able to telekinetically move. But is things. he a shaker? <laughs> there is uh, isn't like sniffers? superpowers kind of in like there, there's like blocks of superheroes. Yeah. So, like there's yeah. pu- there's movers, there's sniffers, there's like it's not yep. just one person has a power. It's mm-hmm. there's group shift- of people. Uh, has what was the it? Same shifters. Power. The the it's been a long time since the, I've seen it. Yeah. So I actually it was, really a, it was a good movie. Yeah, I liked it too. And and the story was great and I think uh an action adventure game would really work for it or uh Oh no, I it's hard to tell, but like trying to find what would fit the story and genre with how the game needs to work is difficult and mm-hmm. I feel like where you would say you want a, for example, League of Legends is a MOBA, right? I think uh, they're working on doing a, a like a fighting style game of it. I think it'd be a cool uh, Dynasty Warriors type game if they if they were to make like an like a League of Legends or a, like an arcane Dynasty Warrior style game. <gasps> Uh, Alita Battle Angel. That would be a great amazing video game. game. Yeah. All right. I just want the world from uh, Ready Player One. Uh, yeah. You go away online and do whatever the fuck you want. So that's actually funny because I was just thinking in my head about this. I read a lot of books. So are there any books that, because, you know, it's common for them to make 
series or TVs from books, but are there any books that you have read that you would love to <coughs> see made into a video game? Hunger Games. Like, like, like a legit the movies were the movies were fine, but like the books, the books were, were incredibly amazing. violent. Yeah, they were, they now, were, and the very movie, much. and the movies did not do it justice. Would you, would yeah. you be your own character, like your own custom character or that you would can you make Katniss, and or... be along, like yeah. kind of run parallel yeah, with that yeah. story? Oh yeah. Would you get to pick your district as well? well that would be that amazing. Would be badass, or would it be I feel random? Like it would have yeah. to run parallel with yeah. the story though, because how long have the games been going on before the books? Yeah, happened? way yeah. before. So it could yeah. be at any point in history. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you could be like a way like, previous champion. That'd be amazing. Yeah. That would be awesome. Um, actually, I know a. There, I'm surprised that hasn't happened. Me too. Right? With how popular it was, there which I a, love the Hunger was, Games. Don't oh, even I get me started. There is a book. Me too. And I'm not much of a reader, but there is a book. That I would love to see turn into a movie because I think it would it would do really well, and it's a, in my opinion I don't think it's a very well known book, but it's called uh, sixty five millimeter. I looked at it recently. It didn't get great reviews. It kind of got middle of the road. But the thing about sixty five millimeter was um, this guy ends up buying an old decrepit movie theater like. Uh, Almost kind of old-fashioned movie theater out uh, out in this town in the middle of nowhere, um, and he wanted to restore it because he used to deal with like he he used to go to movies and that that was like his his thing, um, but then he finds this sixty-five millimeter film, puts it in, tries playing it, and he ends up going missing. It's the AC. I'm like, there's a loud fan. Sorry. Um, he ends up going missing. His friend and his wife go out to try to find him. Um, and it turns out he's been corrupted by this film. Anyone who watches this film starts getting corrupted by it. And then it turns into this whole thing where, like, he's possessed. But he he pretty much becomes something else entirely. And... The character dynamic in that is phenomenal. There, I, I remember there's a character named uh, Andy, who's this real fucking dick. Like <laughs> you, you grow to hate him. I remember his death in the book was very uh, visual and very just like I could see that happening. Uh, he ends up getting in a car accident and ends up getting impaled by a spoke or a, a a pole from a piece of farming equipment. Uh, but I think that would be a fantastic horror movie, and I, I think it would do really, really well. Any final thoughts? we got to get out of here because I, I don't know if you can tell by my eyes, I am allergic to, as fuck to this new cat. Hmm. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a boy. <laughs> <laughs> it is uh it is it's bothersome. Any any final thoughts? Dave should let me take that new cat home. Not happening. Damn it. <laughs> I had to try.